The University of Silicon Andhra is a unique institution and one of its kind in the United States of America, which offers graduate programs in science and technology, the performing arts, languages, yoga and Ayurveda. We have with us today the Dean of the School of Computer Sciences, Dr. Venkat Gudivada. Let us learn a little more about the program MS in Computer Science from him. We welcome you, sir. I am glad to be here. Sir, we are very happy to have you here. We want to learn a little more about this program that we have started, the MS in Computer Sciences. Do let us know what are the main features of this program and is it an accredited program? Sure. program requires 36 credit hours of which 18 hours come from required courses and 18 hours come from elective courses. More specifically, the program requires uh, six hours of internship, which is required for all students. Mm -hmm. And the program is accredited by VASC. So the students have a choice to choose elective courses from three different concentrations. Since computer science is a broad discipline, we focus on emerging technologies. So the three concentrations are computational linguistics, natural language processing, and machine learning. Um, so the program is accredited by VASC, the same organization that accredits uh, University of California system schools. So is the MS uh, in Computer Science program a STEM program? Yes, it is. MS in Computer Science is a STEM designated program. What it means is students will have opportunities to do uh, curricular practical training, CPT, and also after finishing the program, the students are also eligible to apply for op an optional practical training, OPT. So one of the distinguishing features of this program is relationship education. Can you tell us a little more about this, please? Sure. Um, often both parents and students are so much concerned about ranking of universities. So there is actually, a, you know, there's a big problem with the ranking of universities simply because first in ranking is problematic. There was a study done at Stanford University in 2018. It involved uh, tracking a, a survey that involved more than 100,000 students beyond you know, their graduation. They were looking at three different aspects. How, you know, what was the learning achieved and how, you know, what is the job satisfaction based on the college you know, they attended. And lastly, you have life you know, beyond college, life beyond you know, job, you know, how happy you are overall in life as a result of your college education. So its survey is kind of startling. The outcomes you know, that came from the survey is, it doesn't really matter which university you attended, how selective that university is. What mattered is what kind of experiences you had while you were in the college. So experiences inside the classroom and also experiences outside the classroom. So this study says that you know, selectivity is a secondary factor and you need to look at you know, the right fit for your you know, education. So fit is not very precisely defined. What it means is what are your goals and what does the university provide you to achieve you know, those goals. Um, so that's the relationship in you know, rich education and also it involves how much interaction you have while in college with your professors, with staff, with you know, um, you know, things outside the classroom. Does the university provide opportunities to learn outside the classroom? We have recitation sessions in a peer tutoring and also many other services like, for example, we at University of Silicon Andhra, we have industry me in a peer mentorship. So you know, every student will have an industry mentor. So that way you don't need to wait until graduation to you know, prepare yourself for workforce. So it starts you know, from day one. So that's you know, one distinguishing features of uh, relationship rich education. We also care about students in a well beyond graduation. So it's a relationship you, know, you make for life with this institution, mm -hmm. not only while you're at the university, but long after you leave the university. It sounds very interesting. It's a very healthy growth module, sounds like that. Thank you for that uh, answer. So we learned that this program is industry immersive. Can you elaborate a little more on this feature, please, for us? So it's an industry immersive program in the sense that its uh, main focus is preparing students for challenging careers in industry. Mm -hmm. So the industry career preparedness you know, starts you know, from day one. The students you know, set their foot on campus. It begins with a two-day orientation program where we learn more about student aspirations, career aspirations, uh, and they're also you know, life aspirations. 
and we try to map that to what the program offers and also what resources are available to fulfill you know, those aspirations. We also pair every student with an industry mentor. So these are the people who have established careers in industry and they will meet with the student virtually or you know, face to face once in a month, once in three months. They decide the frequency of that um, you know, meet and the in students will get a first hand opportunity to work with and also learn from established you know, industry partners. In addition to that, we also have required internship where students will spend a semester working at a corporation. Secondly, we also have several guest lectures that students can learn from practicing professionals. And we make students work on team projects. You learn you know, how to work in a team. We also you know, teach you know, students you know, how to improve their communication skills so that you, know, you could effectively lead teams in industry. And lastly, we make you know, students work on open source projects. Uh, so that gives them first-hand experience of what it means to work in um, real projects and also work co collaborating with uh, experts in the field coming from all over the world. Uh, the program places equal emphasis on technical and professional skills. Why the equal focus on professional skills? Can you tell us something about this, please? So often there's a big misunderstanding about what professional skills are. Sometimes you know, people call them soft skills. And often it is equated with the good communication skills, both written and oral communication skills. So the reason why we place you know, emphasis on professional skills is, um, you, know, uh, you, you can imagine a quadrant, you know, x-axis, uh, maybe you could just on the vertical line, you can say it's in you know, a professional skills, either you have yes or no, you have professional skills or you don't have professional skills. And then on the y-axis, you can have technical skills. Again, you can have two labels, yes or no. Yes, I have strong technical skills or I don't have strong technical skills. But if you think about the cell, that's the intersection of strong technical skills and strong professional skills, that means you know, you're going to be a leader if you have both of them. On the other hand, if you have strong technical skills and um, not so strong professional skills, you're going to be a good worker bee, right? You know, technical skills, you could, you know, somebody tells you what to do, you can get it done quite nicely, but you will continue to be serving that role. The third scenario is you, you do not have strong technical skills, but you have strong professional skills. These are the managers, you know, team leaders, the group leaders, and managers. And then the last quadrant, which you don't want to be in, means you, know, you don't have professional skills, you don't have technical skills. Uh, that means you know, you, that's not wh where you want it to be. Yes. Um, so we try to focus uh, beyond communication skills, you know, both oral and written communication skills. Some of the other skills are how to ha you know, hold diff difficult conversations and also how to work in a team. You, know, you have conflicts in a team, how to resolve in a conflicts, mm -hmm. and how to make the you know, project management. Um, you know, whether you're going to be a project manager or not, but you need to know how software projects you know, work. Uh, so these are the various you know, skills you know, we emphasize, and I believe you know, based on my own experience, people advance much you know, faster in their careers if they have equal emphasis on technical skills and professional skills. Lastly, you know, if you, we talked about teamwork. So there's a saying, if you want it to run fast, you run by yourself. If you want it to run far, you run together. So that's what the teamwork exemplifies, and that's how typical projects are in software industry. So what does this program provide to develop student leaders? So there are three professional organizations at University of Silicon Andhra. One is uh, IEEE Computer Society. The second one is ACM. The third one is Women in Technology. These are three national organizations and they will have local chapters at University of Silicon Andhra. So what this gives students is an opportunity to have leadership in a skills development. Okay, some students will be designated, one student will be designated as the president of the organization. Then you have vice president, you have secretary, you have other roles, treasurer and other roles. And they collectively plan various events. Um, you know, they plan the event, they conduct the event, they reflect on the outcome of that event. And also they invite uh, speakers at the national level for free because there's a local student chapter they will come travel. Sometimes they also do virtual seminars. Mm -hmm. And by doing this, students will learn a lot more you know, from various experts, apart from the professors you know, that uh, they deal with. Mm -hmm. 
So that's uh, very important you know, for them to learn how to plan an event, how to take a leadership role, and how to execute a project. One important feature of this program is the integration between the theory and the practice. Uh, could you shed some light on this, uh, sir? Yes, often in a computer science could be taught either a theoretical subject or a practical subject. Ideally, it should be taught as a combination of both theory and practice. So there's a saying, uh, a theory without a tool is useless. And a tool without theory is blind because you don't know when to apply that in a tool. And also computer science is a unique in a discipline in the sense that uh, you, know, you can think of computer science as uh, a scientific discipline. So what does a scientist you know, do? Scientists, you know, they build you know, things to study a phenomena of interest. So they're actually building to study. On the other hand, if you look at engineers, they go to engineering school to learn how to build you know, things. So computer science brings in you know, both aspects, the scientific aspect as well as the engineering aspect. Mm -hmm. So it's important you know, to have not only the theoretical background and also how to turn the theory into practice so that when you build in a software systems, you could make predictions about the performance of the system, scalability of the system. Mm -hmm. And how we accomplish that is um, we have non-textbook centric approach to teaching. So we use uh, interactive computational notebooks such as you, know, uh, you have uh, MATLAB notebooks, mm -hmm. you also have mathematical notebooks, and more importantly, we use in you know, a Quattro or R markdown, doc, you know, markdown notebooks you know, you have a piece of in a code, you could execute that piece of code, you could see the result. Then you could incrementally develop a solution as opposed to kind of, you know, reading some theory and then later on going to the lab. We try to, you know, bring both together in the classroom. So students will listen to a lecture for 10 minutes, then they have hands-on experience for the next five minutes, then it goes in a back and forth, and theory and practice, they're tightly integrated in every lecture. Can you tell us something more about the term Silicon Valley Advantage? Right, the University of Silicon Andhra is located right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Uh, there are many well-known high-tech companies that are you know, so close to the campus. Uh, for example, you have Tesla, you have Nvidia, you have uh, you know, Cisco, you have uh, many other companies uh, that are in the vicinity of University of Silicon Andhra. So that gives us a distinct advantage to invite in a guest speakers, um, to also have interactions. For example, you want to find an internship. In many universities, the students have to leave the campus and you know, go to a different city, and they can, they can only do the internship only during summer semesters. By being right in Silicon Valley, you can take courses in the campus. You could also work in an industry uh, in, you know, doing internship. So that's the you know, greatest you know, advantage you know, we have. And also many innovations that have taken place, you know, transformative innovations, groundbreaking innovations, they all happen in Silicon Valley. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. if I want to do a startup in a company, uh, you know, I may be in Austin, I may be in Atlanta, but people always you know, think, okay, I need to go to Silicon Valley to make it you know, happen. So that's the magic of you know, Silicon Valley. Um, so that's, you know, that's a unique advantage you know, we have. Very few universities you know, have this advantage. So can you tell us something about the eligibility criteria for students to enroll into this program, please? Yes, um, we want students with computer science or related degree with 3.0 GPA on a scale of one to four. But we also consider students with other disciplines, BE, BTEC, for example, electrical and communications engineering, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, chemical engineering. On a case by case basis, we look at the transcript and some cases we prescribe some prerequisite courses. So compared to computer science and related disciplines, students coming from ECE, mechanical, civil, they may have to do few prerequisite, maybe two or three prerequisite courses. Students are also required to take TOEFL. So paper-based test is in a 497, internet-based test is 60, or equivalent scores uh, with the ILTS, IELTS, and also Duolingo. GRE is recommended, but it's not required. It will provide a, a other aspect of students' performance. If they already have taken the GRE scores, we encourage them to submit GRE scores. Can you please tell us about the affordability of this program and in comparison with other institutions, how beneficial will it be for the students to take this program? Um, University of Silicon Andhra is a non-profit organization. 
So our tuition fees for the entire program, two-year program, 36 credit hour program is $27,000. Uh, we are agile, we are nonprofit. We try to you know, keep costs in a down, help as many students as possible. For students you know, who are qualified, um, even for students you know, who have need, we have two different types of scholarships. The first one is a merit-based scholarship. The second one is a need-based scholarship. So we don't want anybody to kind of get deterred because of the financial situation. If you have reasonable preparation, they should go ahead and apply. And you don't need to do anything addition, additional apart from application. You will be automatically considered for merit scholarships and need-based scholarships. When students want to apply for this particular program, can you tell us a little about the admission process and the guidelines as to their approach? Students can submit the application online. Uh, go to the website. Uh, it's the cc.uofsa.edu. There's a you know, button on the right-hand side, Apply. You click on the Apply button. It takes you to a, 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 a web application where you could finish your application, I say, in about 30 minutes. Maybe some people may take an hour. It's a very quick kind of process. Once you submit the application, then you need to arrange for official transcripts, your test scores and TOEFL test scores, or you know, Duolingo IELTS test scores, and also arrange for two letters of recommendation. So it's a very quick kind of process. Uh, it, it's, uh, we also act on it very quickly so that you know, students have ample time to get uh, you know, uh, I-20 form. That way, once they receive I-20 form, they uh, set up an appointment for you know, with a visa consular you know, office. Mm -hmm. uh, also, we are here to help all the you know all through the process, and the easiest way to communicate is admissions at ufsa.edu. Of course, the website cc.ufsa.edu it has all the information. You can also request a consultation. There's a you know place in a where you could click a button, and somebody from the department will uh, come back to the students to answer those questions. Thank you, Dr. Venkat. That was a whole lot of information that you gave us regarding this very interesting program. And uh, I'm sure that many students would like to avail the opportunity to be a part of this program and University of Silicon Andhra. So I would encourage all the young people out there who want to be a part of this program to just visit cc.ufsa.edu learn more about the MS in computer science program and make the best use of this opportunity, this unique opportunity being provided to you all. Thank you.